As a graduate student researcher, a typical day is uh, just setting up experiments and figuring out what the results are and then taking that and doing the next experiment. So it's figuring out what questions to ask based on my previous results and then asking the next question. I work on molecular biology and genomic studies of human diseases, particularly sickle cell anemia. I'm a pediatric ophthalmologist, so I see primarily um, patients under the age of 18 who have all sorts of eye conditions like cataracts or glaucoma or black tear ducts or the bread and butter is strabismus where the eyes are misaligned. Um, they may not be working in concert. I'm in the lab two days out of the week and so as you can imagine I have to have a good team of um, investigators that I work with here, my, my lab members, to keep the kitchen going for the times that I'm not here. So my average day, uh, I come in in the morning around 8.30 and I go into my office and I tend to do some administrative things like I check classes that I have to teach, lectures, um, papers that I'm writing. I go into the lab and I speak to all the people in my lab. Each of them are working on a different project and all of them are related to different types of chromosome abnormalities. Um, I go over data with them, I help them with experiments, and even on a good day, so maybe one or two times a week, I actually do experiments myself in the lab. So when I was a high school sophomore, during the summer I had the opportunity to go to an undergraduate institution where they had a summer science institute where high school students from all over the state of Maryland came together at this college and we learned about science. So we learned genetics, we learned microbiology, so we learned how bacteria grew. We learned about organisms like zebrafish, which are aquatic or organisms. And during this week-long period, it really made me interested in science. And that was my, I knew after that Summer Science Institute that I wanted to go into science and I wanted to do genetics. In my middle school years, I remember a math teacher kind of pulled me aside and started to give me extra problems because she felt I wasn't, you know, showing that I was being challenged with the regular curriculum. And that continued through high school as well. And I, I, I think that's probably what did it was that some, you know, and I think that's true for anyone. Somebody takes you aside at an early age and says, gosh, you're not so bad at this. Let me help you out. Let me, in a sense, mentor you. Let me, let me show you by example something you can, you know, do with this with this uh, interest and passion. And I, I think that that's just really critical. And that was sort of a turning moment for me. There are many people over the years that have inspired me to pursue a career in science. First, my dad is a chemist. He's a scientist himself. And I think that what's inspired me most is seeing people do what they love and, not, and worrying about things, but not necessarily about um, the details, but having a love for the process. So in the past we had these diseases like polio that really transformed a generation and really impacted their lives. But um, a scientist came up with a therapy, a vaccine, to fight that. And so now our lives are much different. We don't even think about polio. We have ther therapies for certain diseases, but for some things we don't. Um, and a lot of the patients will come with questions um, as to, you know, how am I going to get better? Will there be something for this? And I can say, yes, I'm helping to work on this in the lab and sort of use that creativity to go from the bedside to the bench and then back to the bedside, hopefully. I'm fortunate in that what I see in the clinic, you know, is a problem I can bring back to the lab and study it. Um, and that's actually my motivation. Um, is the ability to translate an issue in the clinic by bringing it back to the lab and at the bench figure out the biology or the mechanisms for why that particular problem happens in, in patients. So for me the, the burning questions are why do chromosomes do what they do and that is the question that gets me up every single day that's why I get out of bed to come in and 
and just each day chip away at the questions. Why do chromosomes behave the way they do? And what happens when they don't behave the way they're supposed to? How does that lead to cancer? And can we stop them? Can we make them start behaving again the right way? I was uh, one of the first people in my family to go to college. Um, my father had gone to college, but uh, none of my grandparents had gone to college, none of my cousins had gone to college. Um, so I went to college, and then I was the first person in my family to go to graduate school. So this was a big thing, and you know, just kind of, not overcoming, but kind of rising above um, the mentality of, oh, you know, why do you want to pursue a career? Why do you want to pursue, you know, advanced a degree, which was very common in the town that I grew up in. But once, once you go to college, once you go to graduate school, you're there with other people who are also like you. They, they want to get their advanced degree. So in that sense, if you can, if you have a goal, no matter what anyone says to you along the way, just stick with that goal and make sure that you're doing what's going to make you happy. And no matter what, you'll overcome small barriers, large barriers along the way. It's, it's I think, leading an intentional life and lifestyle that will effectively um, be the best solution for somebody who's, who's quite busy. But that's not true just for me in medicine. I mean, that's true for, you know, for, you know, anyone who's um, trying to balance, you know, work and uh, and family. It's just really figuring out how to best utilize their time, and uh, hopefully surrounding themselves with with uh, people who also understand the need to be efficient with with time as well. If you as a girl have decided I want to be a scientist and nothing's going to stop me from doing that, yet I want to grow up and have children, you can do it. You just have to be very organized. Your day has to be very structured. You, know, you may have to work with your husband to drop the kids off at a certain period of time. You work during the day. During the day you probably don't fool around very much. You go to your meetings, you do your work. There's not a lot of uh, time where you're just sitting around talking and chatting and shooting the breeze, but you do the things you need to do and then you can get off work at a reasonable time and go home and actually have your family as well. Well, if you're interested in a career in science, I think that as a youngster, you should find out the scientists in your community, uh, look at research that's going on, and just go and visit and observe and watch. And if you like it and if you like the, the researcher, Try to get your hands a little, a little wet doing the, doing the experiments and, and volunteering to be a part of it. Talk to people, talk to scientists, go, go work in a lab. It's all different experiences. Science is a very um, open field. It, you, there's so many different possibilities. And you, you'll find that a lot of the best scientists are also great communicators and able to talk about and write about their science and publish and that's the way that we get our knowledge out there. And so things that we learned in high school and college and that we're passionate about like writing for me and reading, I found that they actually help my science and so um, anything that you might find to be something that you're passionate about, keep doing it because you never know if that could be a tool for helping you with your science or with any other thing in life. You have to have the right questions in biology, but to really get at the good answers, you need all hands on deck um, in order to, to make sure that you're um, looking at all the variables and um, having different perspectives for how to tackle a, a biological question. What science needs are different people, uh, different faces out there, and I think that if there are a lot of people that don't look like you that are in science, then science needs you. Science needs the questions that you have and the background that you come from. Um, and with those, I think that we can have a more diverse community and more voices at the table. And I think that the best ideas come from different people working together. Mm -hmm.